Next Tuesday sees the launch of Eddie Shah's new newspaper, Today, which he claims uses the most advanced printing technology in the world. This is a test copy. Both the pictures and the text are processed and assembled into pages entirely by computer. Well, it's now possible to do something similar on home micros. There are several packages available that will help you jazz up the tennis club news, perk up the parish magazine, or in our case, mutilate the micro live notes. For home publishing, you really need more than just a word processor. You need to be able to generate documents containing both text and illustrations. And you need the text to be available in a wide variety of fonts and sizes. Well, this package, PageMaker, can do all those things. It runs on a BBC Micro, and you also need a dot matrix printer to print things out. Well, you don't really need a mouse, but it makes it a lot easier. And these are the control buttons here that I shall be using to do almost everything in composing my little newsletter. Well, it lets you compose pages with many of the features you'd expect from a real newsletter. Paper. It's got uh, headlines, it's got columns, it's got pictures and diagrams and so on. It's all very nicely laid out. These are rather clever, I think. Well, I'm in the process of writing our MicroLive program notes, and you can see I've got half a page here, and that's what's displayed on the screen. I can scroll it up and see the bottom half down here eventually as I go along and prepare things. Well, I'm just going to write a new column over here, and I position the cursor where I want to start typing and just hit one of the keys on the mouse like that and I can type home publishing there. Now, I don't want to carry on at that size of font, it's rather too large, so I'm going to change the font size by altering it like this, and I just take it back to a smaller font size. Now, the next thing I have to do is to really define where I'm going to actually put my new piece of text. Well, I want it clearly in this area under home publishing, so I select this icon there and go to define, which enables me to define the area. I place a crosswise there. And all the time, I'm just using the mouse. It's very straightforward. And there. So I've now defined exactly where I want my text. Well, I could type into this area, of course. But instead of doing that, what I'm going to do, I've already prepared an article using a word processing package. And I'm going to extract from that word processing package and write it in that space. This helps, you, for example, if someone else has actually sent you an article that you want to use on his micro. So the next thing I'm going to do... It's asking which drive, it's on drive zero, and the word processing and it's asking the file name to change the disk here and I've already using view, take it in there. The file name is home. Now what it's asking me to do is to position the cursor where I want this to be printed, and I want it just in there, and away it goes. Now, the, I've used all the facilities of the word processing package to produce this, but this package is actually spacing it out and opening up the words so I don't get split words at the end of a line, and it fits perfectly into the little area that I've actually allocated to do it. Right, it's rather nice, and that's it completed. Now, the next thing I might want to do, I'm, there's an article on page three on the Sinclair Spectrum, so what I'm going to do is to actually try and draw a Sinclair Spectrum in the area that I've allocated for it here. And to do that, I select this icon here, which is a kind of paint pot. And I go into shapes, and of course the shape of the Sinclair Spectrum is a box, and quite rapidly I can try and draw myself a Sinclair Spectrum. Well, that's one box, and of course it's got keys on it, and so I start off doing the keys like this, and I can re <laughs> repeat them. There we go. Repeat them like that, and so on and so forth, and get some sort of replication of a Sinclair Spectrum. Now, I might want to actually colour that in or paint it, so I go to the paint icon up here, and take it down here, and bingo, I've got something black, and it roughly looks like a Sinclair Spectrum. Well, it doesn't look very good to me, it's rather pathetic, but what we'd like to do now is to load in a real picture of a Sinclair Spectrum. Leslie. Right, and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to use this device from Watford Electronics. It's called a digitizer. It costs £95 and it lets you grab frames of video into your micro. Now, I've got the digitizer connected to an ordinary home video recorder and you see the television there is tuned to BBC One. Who have we got on? The Terry Wogan Show. His guest is Norman Tebbit. I'm sure neither of them will mind helping us with this demonstration. 
Right, now what happens is once every couple of seconds or so, the digitizer scans the incoming pictures, sending the video information to the computer's memory. And you can actually see that happening on the computer monitor. Now, now seriously, we must say at this moment, if you're going to publish pictures taken off the television, you do need copyright clearance from the broadcasting company. But of course, you don't have to use broadcast pictures at all. You can also use a home video camera like this one here, and you can grab pictures of anything, your husband, your granny, or your dog. But uh, what Max said he wanted was a picture of the spectrum. So that's what he's going to get. I shall uh, select camera on the video, and as soon as I've got a picture of the spectrum up on the computer monitor, it means that that's safely in the memory, so I should be able to save that picture onto disk. There it goes. Yep. And, of course, once I've got it on disc, I can do anything I like with it. Mac, I believe you wanted this for your micro-live publication. Thank you very much. Hold Here the we go. Page. Let's try it. Well, I've already scrolled up, as you can see, the top part of the page, and I've got to, by using this arrow here, I just scroll it up a little bit more to give me the whole of the bottom half of my sheet. And there it is. Now, what I've got to do is to, of course, read in the, um, the disc that Leslie has just given me. And I'm going to read it out onto the screen, insert the disc, and press execute. Here we go. Drive zero. Load. And it's asked me the file name. Now, this file name this time is Spectrum. It looks an odd spelling, but that's the name we've given to the file. And here's hoping, Leslie, that you got it. Uh, it is perfectly. And here it is beginning to come out. Now, it's a very hard test for the digitizer, is this, because the spectrum is black with black keys with this very fine white lettering on it. And you'll notice that it's also negative. In other words, it's like a negative film you've got processed in. The black is white and the white is black. But once it's in the machine, we can do all sorts of things. We can, we can turn it round, left to right. We can flip it over, top to bottom. We can increase its size to double the size. We can shrink it down to half the size to position it in any particular position we want in our newspaper. And we can also actually touch it up by using the paintbrush and clear out some of the mess that we've got. Well, there it is. It's red in. Now, let's get... Let's take the icon down to there, and we can invert it, and bang, that's our picture of the spectrum. Well, it doesn't look all that brilliant, so perhaps what we should do is just do a little bit of a touch-up. And I can do that by, again, selecting the paint pot. I want a pattern. The pattern I'm going to select is white, because I'm going to clear up all some of those terrible dots and things. And I'm going to use the spray to do that. And start, and there we go. I start to clear off all this rubbish around here. And, and oops, I've carved out a bit of this wonderful spectrum. And so it goes on, and that's really quite nice. Yeah. Well, the page maker costs about £50, and if you want the mouse, that's another £40. You've been able to do this kind of thing for some time on more expensive equipment, but now that many home micros have high-resolution graphics and more memory, this kind of program should be soon available for a wider range of machines. Well, that's just about all we've got time for this week. Next week, though, we talk to Shirley Williams about the way computers are affecting our working lives, and we'll be mocking up a possible office of the future. So, until then... Goodbye. And that program can be seen again next Monday at half past five here on two.